The moment the distillation column at the Elcoil refinery erupted into a tower of fire, Russia's industrial heart began collapsing in real time. The shockwave tore through metal, ignited crude tanks, and sent flames rolling across the Volga skyline like a sunrise made of gasoline. At exactly 3.47 a.m., four FPV drones and their own mothership struck with surgical precision, delivering the hit that would trigger a $5 billion firestorm and plunge four regions of Russia into chaos. It looked like a single attack, a single moment, but it was actually the final move in a six-hour operation. To understand how Ukraine created that moment, the story rewinds to the beginning of the operation. The operation began at 9 p.m. on the 17th of November 2025, in total darkness. Ten Ukrainian Boba motherships lifted into the sky from separate launch sites, each cradling four FPV-1 assassins. Together they formed a unified hunting network, a coordinated wolf pack whose route curved along a dangerous 600-mile path towards their targets. For the team assigned to Elcoil, the route meant flying 50 feet above the Volga River, low enough that a single navigation error meant a cold splash, mission failure, and instant loss. By 3.30 a.m., after nearly six hours of ghost-like travel, Russian operators finally detected them. Inside the Elcoil security room, a Pantsir S1 operator watched his screen, normally a field of black, blink to life. Four faint contacts had appeared. Four targets, low altitude, he shouted. The refinery's final defensive line came alive. Two Pantsir systems shifted their turrets, hydraulics whining in the cold pre-dawn air. Then, at 3.40 a.m., the Ukrainian AI executed its most ruthless trick. Through its thermal camera, it spotted a flock of living geese cutting across the sky. The AI ordered an immediate split maneuver. Three bobas broke into erratic, bird-like motion. At the same moment, the fourth boba focused its transmitter not on the Russian radar, but on the geese. It lit up the flock and turned it into what looked like a massive incoming cruise missile wave. On the Russian screen, the operator saw two choices, three tiny blips or one enormous one. His own doctrine screamed at him, kill the biggest threat first, and it was the wrong call. Missiles were launched against the false target. They detonated in a cloud of feathers. For 12 seconds, the Pantsir gunners were blind. Their turrets locked on ghosts, their radar fixed on empty sky. It was a tiny window, but more than enough. All four Bobas surged forward. At 3.45 a.m., they released a swarm of 16 FPV drones that peeled away like attack drones. Russian crews snapped from confusion to panic, firing wildly, turning the air into a lethal maze of cannon shells. 12 FPVs were cut down, their burning fragments falling onto oil tanks and starting new fires. But four drones survived the gauntlet. At 3.47 a.m., Boba number four didn't turn away. It dove with its own children. Five vehicles hit together. Four slammed into the distillation column. One tore through the main control room. A billion dollar system collapsed into molten ruin. The final drone transmission was a cold monotone. Drop confirmed, target locked. Three, two, one, impact. And that refinery strike was only a smokescreen. While Russian commanders shouted over emergency channels about Nizhny Novgorod, the other six Bobas from the original wolf pack were still hunting in near silence closing in on their own high-value targets. At 4.15 a.m., three Bobas approached the Sterlitamak plant, Russia's primary source of military-grade kerosene, the lifeblood of its Southern Air Command. From 15 miles out, two motherships released eight FPV drones. The third, Boba No. 8, climbed high above them. Its role was more critical than delivering explosives. It was bait. At 4.25 a.m., the Russian Krasika-4 electronic warfare system surged to life. A wall of GPS crippling power flooded the area. The eight FPVs instantly went blind. A lone Pantsir on site opened fire, destroying three drones with clean precision. To the Russians, the defense was working perfectly. At 4.30 a.m., Boba No. 8 dove. The Pantsir locked onto it immediately. The drone now appeared as a high-priority threat. Two missiles were launched. 
at that exact second, Boba number nine dove two, forcing the Pantsir to split its remaining ready missiles. Four missiles were fired, four locks, no escape. At 4.36 a.m., both decoy Bobas exploded mid-air in two bright fireballs. A deliberate decoy maneuver created a 12-second window. Their deaths bought exactly 12 seconds. And in those 12 seconds, the remaining FPVs continued flying, guided only by physics, memory, and the Krusuka jamming signal itself, now functioning as a crude homing beacon. Five drones slipped through. A minute later, the cost of the sacrifice was paid in full. Two FPVs hit the main reactor housing. One shredded the cooling pumps. The final two crashed, but it didn't matter. The blow was devastating. Two billion dollars worth of strategic assets went offline. The fuel source for Russia's entire Southern Air Command evaporated. The Ukrainian hit triggered panic across Russia's command structure. Believing their industrial heartland was under coordinated assault, commanders ordered emergency redeployments of high-value air defense systems. Eight of Russia's best Pantsir and Tior units were pulled back from frontline positions to protect infrastructure, leaving gaps in the battlefield shield. One of those systems, the Tor M2, was waiting for the next attack. At 5 a.m., two Bobas flying in tight formation prepared their strike on the main electrical substation in Volgograd, the power source for a major military rail hub. From 10 miles out, they released eight FPV drones. The Russians were ready for this one. At 5.10 a.m., the Tior operator acquired eight low slow targets. This matched the Tor's designed engagement profile. Two missiles were launched. The first wiped out two FPVs. The second destroyed another. The Ukrainian formation was being dismantled with machine-like precision. But the Ukrainian AI knew the Tor carried a fatal flaw. Its power came from a single engagement radar. Blind that radar, and the entire system became helpless. Two more missiles were launched. Both decoys were destroyed in mid-air. While the Tor was staring up, its remaining three attackers slipped under its blind spot. The operator, realizing his mistake as his system confirmed the decoy kills, tried to reacquire targets. But a four second radar rotation time is an eternity in drone warfare. At 5.15 a.m., all three FPVs struck. One smashed the central switching gear. Two severed the main high voltage transmission lines. A flash of blue electricity lit the horizon, and then the region fell into darkness. 16,000 homes, and the primary military rail hub for the Southern Front, lost power instantly. The two motherships banked away, disappearing into the dark. At 5.30 a.m., the last mothership followed a northern route toward the city of Rilsk. Its target was the main railway switching station connecting Kursk to occupied Luhansk. Disabling it would choke a strategic supply artery. From 12 miles out, the Boba released four FPV drones. The defending Tor M2 locked onto the first two immediately and took them out. Its radar began its four second rotation to reacquire. The Ukrainian AI now played its final card, psychological warfare. One surviving FPV sent a microburst transmission on the Tor's internal diagnostic frequency, a channel typically restricted to internal diagnostics. But the signal appeared authentic. The Tor's internal console flashed a warning. Cascade Failure Missile Launcher 3B. For the Russian crew, this was a catastrophic emergency. For three full seconds, they stared down at their diagnostics, trying to verify the error. And with their attention pulled off the radar, the drones vanished from their screen completely. By the time the radar completed its rotation, the sky was empty. At 5.38 a.m., one FPV destroyed the switching tower. The second rammed into an ammunition train preparing to depart. The resulting secondary blast shook the entire city. The shockwave rolled across the border into occupied Luhansk. The final domino of the six-hour operation fell. So we return to the decisive moment, 3.47 a.m., when FPV-1 and Boba No. 4 slammed into the distillation column. That strike mattered because Russian crews had been running overnight repairs. Safety protocols were bypassed. Security was lax. The hit didn't just destroy equipment. It ignited the core of their wartime economy. 
From that single moment, a $5 billion firestorm erupted across the country by available estimates. 40% of Moscow's gasoline supply went offline. The Southern Air Command lost its kerosene source. A critical rail hub lost power. A major military artery was severed. In exchange, Ukraine lost three motherships and 36 FPVs. Less than $1 million of equipment inflicted $5 billion in damage. But the operational effect extended beyond damage to include changes in air defense posture. Russia redirected eight of its best air defense systems away from the front to protect burning rubble. Every redeployed system created a new gap for HIMARS rockets and Storm Shadow missiles to exploit. The larger lesson is brutal. You can build a $500 million shield, but it's worthless if your enemy is smart enough to throw an $8,000 rock around it. Ukraine isn't just fighting harder, it's fighting smarter. This is the new face of war, and Russia is learning that lesson one burning refinery at a time. Analysts now debate how the Ministry of Defense might adapt to mothership drone tactics. If you were the Russian Minister of Defense waking up to this $5 billion hangover, what would you do next? How do you defend against a strategy built on mothership drones, AI illusions, sacrificial decoys, and psychological traps? Leave your best strategic thinking in the comments. The most insightful ideas may appear in a future analysis. For continued analyses of evolving tactics, follow for updates.